do, we should really get a theme song. Do, 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 we should really get a theme song. We kind of should. But we ain't. Hello, everyone, and welcome to We Care About Things a Normal Amount. I am your host this month, Awkward Brain Lives. I will not be explaining the name. This month, we want to give a shout out to our patrons, Mythbreeze Emporium of Lost Socks. I am partial to transmissions from Smeagol. Crackersteen's Craptorium. If you need crap, we got crap. Little Cat's Living Doll Hospital and Chicken Boo's Costume Emporium. We also want to give a shout out to Donny O and listeners like you. This month, I will be going by myself because Geese Juggler did her Dune Rants by herself. And as well as next month's project, Doom 2 Return of Moon Mouse. We're not pegged into that name, but I like it. We're not sure if she does. So this month, we will be discussing a crim underrated album from 1999, Chris Gaines, The Life of Chris Gaines. Now, if you're not familiar with the work of Chris Gaines, he is a Australian artist who was going to make his big debut in America, but before he could do so, he died in a car accident. So we're going to talk about this album, The Life of Chris Gaines, which serves as not only a best of, but a memorial. And believe it or not, it was supposed to be a soundtrack for the album, The Lamb, in which Garth Brooks was supposed to be the executive producer. Like I said, unfortunately, Chris Gaines died before this can become come to fruition. And when they released the album, it got lukewarm reviews, and so they decided not to go forward with the album. Now, I am a fan of this album. Um, I was 18 when it came out, and I do believe I still owe Columbia House 50 cents for this album. <laughs> but we're going to dive into who Chris Gaines was, maybe discuss some of his inspirations, as well as um, some of my favorite songs from the album. Now, like I said, Chris Gaines was an artist from Australia. His mother was a Olympic swimmer, and when he turned 12, he moved to America. He got his debut in a, in a band called Crush. And believe it or not, he was not the lead singer, actually a guitarist. After the tragic death of one of his members of Crush, Chris Gaines decided to move forward as a solo artist. Now, when you listen to this album, you can see the depth of emotion. And you can also listen and hear the amount of inspiration that comes not only from country music, like his executive producer, uh, Garth Brooks and Keith Urban. You can also hear his inspiration from 80s that I grew up on. You can hear a little bit of Paul and Oates, Oates, as well as a lot of, I won't, I don't like to use the word cheesy, but some of the more commercial, like Rick Astley. Um, like I said, I'm a fan of this album. I, I really do. Um, I really like it a lot. Um, I am a big fan of country music. I love it. I actually am a big fan of music altogether. I will try any artist once, and usually I can find something good about every artist. For example, Justin Bieber, he may not be everybody's favorite. I don't necessarily like his music, but I do like the song Sorry. Taylor Swift, not the biggest fan. Please do not come after me. I'm not the biggest fan. But I love Wildest Dream. I love uh, All Too Well, all 10 minutes of it. So I, I love one of the things that I, one of the genres of music that I love is country. And I love country music because country music tells a story. 
I love a good storyteller. I love when people take you out of your everyday mundane things and put you into their mundane things. It puts you into their, what they're feeling, what is, you know, a beginning, middle, and end. And as an avid reader, I, I love that. I just love that, which is surprising that I don't like Taylor Swift because she is, above all things, a great storyteller, which is probably why we connect as an audience to the song all too well. I mean, it's a 10 minute song. We're not supposed to sit there for that long and listen to a song, but we're not listening to a song. We're listening to a story about a relationship between two people who truthfully enough, should not have been together. (laughs) Um, And so we all connect to that. We all understand that. We all feel for Taylor Swift. Uh, Also, um, you know, rappers from the 80s, I I will say even into the 90s, you don't really, you know, they really told a story about their life and everything that was in it to a point where we believed because we listened to these artists like Tupac Shakur and Snoop Dogg and um, Nas, because we listened to these artists, we believed that we was part of that life, even though we may have been in Middle Tennessee or in Idaho, we listened, and so we believed we were part of the life. Um, See that example in BTS, Spring Day. If you've never looked up the lyrics to the song Spring Day, it tells a story about a love, it's a love story about two people who can't be together. And it's amazing. You know, the music to it and just, just, oh my gosh. Spring Day, if you listen, if you talk to any BTS fan and you ask them what is their favorite B track, they will tell you spring day oh my gosh um we have yet to come where they're talking about you know coming through the pandemic and how they miss everyone and that even though things may seem bleak at the moment it's not what we're going through right now it's not everything we're going through the best is yet to come we're looking forward we're not looking back we're looking forward and uh it 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 touches us it speaks to us there's artists that i'm sure you have artists in your life or artists that you have listened to and it has transformed you into their life into what you know what they're dealing with every day now don't get me wrong we like a good a good bounce song we love to move, we love to dance, but sometimes when you're when you're feeling it, you want to feel what they feel. Um another good example is actually Garth Brooks. There's a song called Um More Than a Memory. If you never heard More Than a Memory, run, 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 run. Go to Spotify. I will be putting up a playlist of some of the songs that we're talking about today and his heartbreak in that song and I can't I don't I can't find the video I looked it up I can't find the video on YouTube but he's talking about how relationships are not just you know once you're done with the relationship once you break up it's that person is still in your heart it still lingers there are still things that you miss about this person to a point where that person still lives with you and you don't know how to deal with that person not being around and everybody's telling you to move on you're just you know you're putting it in rose-colored glasses this is a memory and Garth Brooks is telling everybody that this is not just a memory this is still something I hold on to I still hold on to this. Uh, So I will be putting a playlist up on Spotify. And I'll put the link 
on our when this comes out on the 22nd ish um i will be putting the link on our twitter account our twitter account we care about things a normal amount at we care podcast um and if you if you uh you want come by give us a follow give us a like also if you're watching this on youtube give us a like give us a a subscribe give us a thumbs up so that you we know that you like what we're doing so now let's go into a couple of songs on the chris Gaines album that we love so um it starts off with one of my favorite songs which is called the way i remember it i can't play it for you because you know copyright infringement but it is a song telling us about the small town that he grew up in but it also discusses unreliable narrators he speaks about how you know it was a small town with nothing to do but he was happy there and he eventually says the line i'll tell the story this way time and time again because that's the way he remembers it and it struck me because there are certain stories in our lives that we tell from our childhood that has been altered time and time and time again because not that it's necessarily true what happened but the way we remember it as adults change it changes um who we are changes what we remember changes because we get older and we start to forget but overall you know it's an unreliable narrator uh for example i had a very happy childhood i had a great childhood um with my mom and my sibling but as an adult i finally asked my mom i finally realized i I, like we were broke and i asked my mom asked my mom how broke were we and she said to me did you have a happy child and the answer to that was yes i did but because i looked at it as a teenager i looked at it the way i remember it and certain realizations that I had as an adult, it changed. The understanding was growth was there. There was a different understanding of my childhood than the adult me at 45. <laughs> um, the way the adult me remembers certain situations. So I, I that struck that struck me. I love it. I just I love that song. Has more of a country influence. But you can see the country crossover, like Shania Twain or uh, uh, Rascal Flatts or Lady Antebellum, like that crossover sound that we love. It still has that pop influence, but you can hear the guitar, uh, the riffs that we riffs that we come to love in country. Uh, then there's another song that is pure pop. It is pure '80s mtv white background everybody come together and this song is called my love tells me so and it is let me make sure i'm not lying it is actually the only song by crush that is okay no this is not the song that crush made it um that they had their their hit with but it does have a bridge section that actually contains snapping fingers throwing the bread bridge and the linear notes which is also you probably can't find this album it's 20 something years old but actually 30 oh my god how old am i um it tells there there's a part in the middle of it that has snaps in the bridge and it was supposed to be a temporary filler but uh they listened to it they liked it they kept it in so it's a weird one but i like it now chris Gaines, in the middle of his career 
just as he was hitting it big, actually got into a car accident. And because of this car accident, he has facial rec- he had facial reconstructive surgery and it took him a while to get out of the hospital. And when he was in the hospital, he met a nurse. He doesn't um he doesn't tell the name of the nurse, but that's not important. What he learned about her was that she was a very straightforward person. She was somber, not sad, but, you know, a somber person who was, you know, like I said, straightforward, serious. And he was inspired by this nurse to write a song called, oh my gosh, I wrote it down, I wrote it down, Unsigned Letter. I love this song. I love this song. I love this song. It's a, it's, his voice and the music is very understated, but the story that he tells is so powerful. The story is that one day in the mail, she gets a letter, the nurse gets a letter, and the letter states it just says, come to me. And inside the letter is a first class ticket to the city of Boston. Boston. And so the question is, is she going to go? Is she going to shake up her life? Is she going to let go of the fear that she may have? That anxiety of, I don't want to do anything different. My life is settled here. Or is she going to take that chance? Is she going to run for it? Is she going to find out the mystery and the intrigue that's behind this letter? And it it's such a great story, but it's also a story of inspiration. Chris Gaines looked outside himself for inspiration in the stories of his life. And he looked at his nurse and found a story there. It's like when you go out to the mall and you people watch. I'm not sure if you guys do that, but I do. And I absolutely adore it because I people watch and I just make up stories about people. And, you know, it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. If this story is the actual story of their life, it just, it's fun. It's fun to imagine. So I just, I love it. Um, so also next song we're going to discuss is the song Maybe. Uh, Maybe is a conversation that Chris Gaines has with the band member who so tragically died in a car accident. He writes them. He basically has this conversation about what is he supposed to do next? Can he be the person that he needs to be? And it's also the the ending has these violins that it makes it seem like Chris is finally letting go of the grief and the anger that is living inside of him. Because it, it, you know, when you lose someone in a heartbeat, you get angry. Let's put it this way. I know I did. I know I have. Because you don't want to deal with the grief. So you go with an emotion that you're familiar with. Anger. And so I think writing this song and recording this song made it a way for Chris to let go of the anger that he may have had towards his band member and everybody that was around him and was really able to process the grief of his friend going, his friend dying and and being left alone. So Chris really does... Uh, sell it he really does you know let us know 
what he is thinking and what he imagined what his his friend is doing uh what his friend is doing now he you know very subtly subtle in a subtle way chris shows us his belief his faith and again his emotion towards his friend that died so it's it's oh my gosh i love that song another song we're gonna go with two two other songs that are both ballads and one is called it doesn't matter it don't matter to the sun so apparently this is a song that chris's father used to sing to his mother when they danced in the living room and it's so cute you know when you look at your parents and realize that they're people who fell in love it's an amazing thought it's an amazing feeling to look at two people who you feel are just your parents but you realize that these are adults who have lived their life and they're they're enjoying it together they chose to be your parents they chose to be partners they chose to move forward to forward together and so this song is um like i said it's a ballad and it's called it don't matter to the sun and the lyrics of the song talks about the world the physical things in the world that keeps us all these laws that keep us grounded how the sun rotates around the the ooh baby how the moon rotates around the sun the tides are coming in butterflies fly and 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 whales swim but it doesn't matter i don't care what's happening in the world i don't care what the physical laws tell us they are inanimate objects that don't live in the real world and our relationship what we have together has no effect on that at all our relationship does not affect that and what they are doing does not affect us in this moment together it it, it's just a way to keep time it's a way for us to to realize physically it's what keeps us alive and none of that matters if you are not here beside me there is an amazing line in which he says it doesn't matter to the world but it will be the end of mine and you know you just kind of hear that and you kick your feet and you giggle a little bit because you know you just kind of like oh my god it's so cute they're in love but again this is one of those situations listening to it at 19 and listening to it now as a (laughs) adult you realize you realize fully what he means by that what his dad means when he tells his mom that and it's amazing it's amazing for two people to have the connection where the world that they have built together the life that they have built together the physical elements that they have built together is more important than anything else that surrounds them the sun the stars the moon the tides hours days minutes are things that prop up the life in the world that we have built together and it's it's just the cutest i love it it's a simple it's a simple thing um but it just it it oh my gosh it's just so great 
Uh, we are gonna discuss the song that most people are familiar with, the song that people love, the song that made people go, oh my god, it's amazing. And then they didn't listen to the album. Listen to the album. Um, this album, this song is called Lost in You. And again, we kick our feet and we blush and we go, oh my god, it's so cute. But this song is probably the most adult song. And I don't mean that way. That's creepy. You all should get your minds together. You know who you are. When I when I say it's the most adult, I mean it's the most emotional, I guess. Uh, it's the most, I don't know how to put it. This album is, you know, a lot of people say that this album is alternative. And as a child of, you know, like I said, this album came out in 1999. I was 18, I was big into the alternative scene, you know, Chris, not Chris Gaines, oh my gosh, uh, Foo Fighters, and Nirvana, and um, Matchbox 20, and all of these bands that made rock music, but it really wasn't rock music, and this song is not alternative. The song is not country music. The song is not pop. It is just a song that, you know, when you hear it, you don't think of a giant pop star. You don't think of, you know, stadium tours. You think of a guy in a bar at an open mic trying to impress a girl, I guess. Yeah, I'd say that. A smoky cafe, open mic night. Just Chris Gaines and a guitar trying to convince some girl that he loves her and that she should take a chance because he is all in. Chris's voice is different. He sings in a way that he does not sing in the rest of the album. The song is it's emotional. It's from the heart. It's a lot more raw. I guess is what I'm trying to say. He uses a falsetto that he does not use anywhere else in the album. It's a lot more thoughtful than every other song in the album. Is it's you know I, I say that the the album tells stories, but I think this one is a little bit more lyrical it's not a beginning middle of, and an end what this album is is just what that album sorry what this song is you know an artist writing writing poetry and painting a picture this picture may not come through to everybody but you can tell there is a picture and you know art should not It shouldn't necessarily be a tree or a house, but when you look at it, it should make you feel something. You know, that's the difference. To me, that's the difference between drawing a picture and it being art. It should make you feel something. It should make you go, wow, or ew, or, you know, make you kick your feet. Oh, my God. And make you blush because... You have felt a love like that, or you've never felt a love like that. But it is Chris's, to me, it's his best song. I think it's the best song on the album. I think it's really, really important to Chris as an artist to understand what he what he is. Like I said, it's a shame we never got the second album. Uh, apparently, all of the tracks that are for Chris Gaines, um, is owned by Garth Brooks. Ha 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 ha. And Garth Brooks has said he has enough, there's enough material there for a second album. And I'm like, okay, give me the album. He hasn't released it yet. So I'm curious what that sounds. The album itself has 
I want to say 12 to 13 tracks. Um, uh, hold on, hold on. It's on my phone. Because 13 songs. In 13 songs, we get everything that you need to know about Chris the artist, about Chris the writer, Chris the musician, and all the different ways fit together. Uh, I'm going to actually, I, I'm, I'm going to, I will say this, I'm not a fan of the big, of the song right now. Uh, Main Street also gives us the same artistic vibes of the way I remember it. I feel like Chris is, the way Chris writes, I feel like ballad-wise, you cannot top it. Like, there's no way to top what he does in the ballad. So, the song Drifting Away, the song Drifting Away, is a marriage of Lost in You, and it don't matter to the sun okay and it's drifting away is another story this one gives us the end of the story he does not know it's the end he has a feeling that it's the end he feels like he can save it maybe maybe he can save it but he feels like his his partner is done He's not necessarily done, but his partner is done. And a lot of people, I've heard a lot of people say that a woman will leave a relationship before she leaves the relationship. There's a point for women when they are done, they are not, they then think of the exit strategy. Meanwhile, men do the exit strategy and then they say they're done. I'm not necessarily sure. I have not been in a long time. A, a long-term serious relationship but that's what I've, I've seen it happen I've actually seen it happen with people around me and it's true and what what Chris is trying to do is he is trying to pull somebody who is drifting away back to him but he's not sure how to do it and he's afraid that he can't He's afraid that he can't do it. And it's very, it's very powerful how he brings this back. And with the background singers and his emotion of the song, it just, it takes you to that relationship. And not in a voyeuristic way where we're like sitting on the couch eating popcorn or not in a weird way where we're like, should we leave now like i think they're breaking up i think we should leave now you know this is awkward but in a way where we feel for these two people we feel for him and we feel for her because you know he he says there's a line where he says he's afraid that she's forgiven him too many times and you feel for her because it sometimes forgiving somebody takes so much out of you that not a, it's not it's not worth not worth it anymore. You've taken so much of me. If you keep doing the same thing over and over again, and you know you just kind of want to hug them both and be like, "Oh, buddy, you shouldn't be here anymore." Sorry. Like, oh, buddy. And you want to kind of hug her and kind of hug him and, you know, like, just walk him off the stage like they're James Brown. It's, 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 it's great. You know, a lot of times you get into a song and you don't necessarily hear the end of a relationship. You hear the aftermath where people are angry or they're sad or they're trying to get over it. But you don't get into the middle of the breakup. And so, you know, you meet and you fall in love and then in the middle where it's hard, but we're going to make it through and la da 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 and positive, you don't get the end of it. Like, this is the beginning of the end. So, like I said, Chris Gaines, storyteller, middle, beginning, middle, end. That's, that's one of his, you know, straightforward storytelling ones. But like I, I'm, I'm gonna end this because I'm trying not to like be here all day telling you about how much I love this album. Uh, this album to me is a solid eight and a half out of ten because there are 
two songs on there that I skip, it's very, very hard for me because I, I sometimes like I have the ADHD and I'm like, let's let's find the song that gives me serotonin. This album overall gives me the serotonin. I'm a, like I said, I'm a big fan of it. I think one of the things that make this album so extraordinary is the fact that my family loves this album. Geese Juggler and I tend to like the same elements of something. We like the same thing, but we like it for different reasons, and we like different elements of the thing. So when you, when we finally converge and that uh, magical Venn diagram, usually a vi- uh, that Venn diagram is very small. But this is this is this is one of the one of the few times times that the Venn diagram it's a circle. When I asked her about whether or not I should do this, where I talk about the album and maybe do an introduction to people who've never heard the album, she um she was enthusiastically on board and then said, You gotta do it by yourself. And I'm happy I did, because this, if we had did it together, this would have been six hours of us fighting each other about which one, which piece of the song was the better part. Her favorite song may not have been my favorite song, which is It Doesn't Matter to the Sun. It don't matter to the sun. But in three months, if you ask me again, I'll tell you it's unsigned letter. And in three months, it'll be drifting away. And in three months, it'll be the way I remember it. And in six months, it'll be maybe uh, it rotates. Could be, like in the end, could be a white flag. Could be white flag. One of the songs we didn't discuss today. And then, like, my rotation and her rotation will never sync up. It'll be three years and we will sync up on the song for two minutes and then we'll keep rotating it so uh, i think it's better if i did this by myself i'm trying to keep this at a tight 45 so we'll see how that goes but this is i'm gonna ask a couple of questions leave your leave your answers in the link below or to us let us know what's your art what artist makes you feel like that what artist tells a story to you what artist makes you feel like you're in the story like you're watching you're watching this story like a movie or you're sitting there watching a friend go through these things or a friend is is venting to you what song from what album from your childhood is deeper than you thought it was you're sitting here listening do 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 and then as an adult you're like whoa they were going through some stuff so leave your answers down in the comments or tweet it to us at We Care Podcast. I'd like to thank you for listening to me today. And that's the end of us discussing Chris Gaines. Now, let's get into something that's very important about this album. If you tell me the truth about this album, let me tell you. I know. I know the story behind this album. I know what was supposed to be with the movie. I understand who was supposed to be the, you know, who was supposed to be the main character and the ending of the movie. I am, like I said, I have listened to this album since I was 19. I have read the linear notes a thousand times. I am a garth brooks super fan okay now this is not an invitation for you to tag garth brooks this is not an invitation for you to tell garth brooks because to quote donald glover you can't disappoint a picture i want a second album garth brooks where is the album i want the album and i would like to get tickets to your next show that's not a thousand dollars i am a poor i am a poor okay i am a poor 
uh, once again, this has been Awkward Brain Lives. We're going to once again tell you that the Patreon is we care about things a normal amount. And joining our Patreon, you'll get updates, you'll get polls, you get the first listen of the playlist. I am going to put up to um of some of the songs that I discussed and a couple more. A couple of them may be T- Bangtan Soyanda BTS. So you're warned up front. The Twitter account is We Care Podcast. And thank you. I thank you. Keith Juggler thanks you for spending time with us and listening. And we also want to say that sometimes you get people in your life that truly believe in you. And the people who encouraged us to do this truly believe in us. And so uh, we would like to say thank you and to just we're grateful for your support. You don't know how much that means to us. And once again, we would like to give a shout out to... Dunny O, Mithri's Emporium of Lost Socks, Transmissions from Smeagol 92055, not to be confused with Smeagol 92054, Krakenstein's Craptorium, if you need crap, we got crap. Uh, we also want to give a shout out to Little Cat's Living Doll Hospital and Chicken Boo's Costume Emporium. And Once again, listeners like you. I'm going to sign out. I'm going to say goodbye. So long. And uh, I hope you guys have a great day, a great week, a great month. And you join us next week. Not next week. You join us next month on the 22nd-ish. And I will be giving the reins over to Geese Juggler. So once again, thank you. And you guys are awesome. We appreciate you.